Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with part two of the Electrical 101. So now we're working on the bike. I have put on some jumpers onto this side right here, which we showed you guys there was a, uh, clearly there was a short on the other side. And then when I turn the key on, put the directional on to the side. Where's it? It's flashing. Everything's working beautifully. Okay, and then when we shut the flasher off, it all works beautifully. Now, we're working on the dead side. This side right here, remember, we wiggled the wires. We couldn't get anything working on it. So, I hooked up my probe right here. And, um, well, let's get you guys in the stand. But before I do, please take a moment, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. Please give me a thumbs up. I've been working really hard on these videos, trying to help you guys out with them. And uh, definitely say something in the comments, you know, if, if it's helping you out. Um, because that's what this is all about, is helping you guys electrically diagnose your machines. And it doesn't matter what you're working on for a bike. You know, I try to do the best I can helping you guys out with these questions and answers. And uh, it would just be much, much appreciated. So let's get you guys in the stand, and we're going to crack a lock Okay, first thing you need to do is determine if you have a power problem or a ground problem. Alright, so that's the first thing you, you need to do. There are multiple different ways of doing this, and I'm going to show them all to you. Here's a wire, a wiring diagram of a light. Here's a battery. Your power wire goes to the bottom of the light, and then over here is your ground. Okay, if you test the ground and it's good, and there's a break in the positive wire. It's a positive problem. If you test the positive and you got positive, then it will be a ground problem. Okay? So, remember, if you got power to the light, it's a ground problem. If you have ground to the light and no positive, it's the opposite. Okay? That's what we're, that's what we're going to do on this channel. So, um, first things first, we need to see if we even have voltage or what the case may be. So let's get crack a on that. Being a 6 volt system. And going through a light relay. You could be reading different things. So we're going to put this on. Unfortunately DC 20. It's the only ones available on it. And um, it does volts. So let's oh, oh, let do turn it on here. And we'll read it. So first thing we want to do is read the battery. If you have no battery, no power, this ain't going to work. Now remember, the, the battery, I got 6 volts right across that battery. See that on? 6 volts, I'm good. Okay. So now I got 6 volts there. Now I know when I hook it up, I'm going to have less volts because it has to go through the whole wiring belt. Let me get the battery back on the bike. Alright, so we got the, uh, the multimeter set back up. 6 volts. And I need to see if I have power. Remember, you're not going to read 6 volts at the light because the other light's on. The, back, the bike is not running. You probably get about 2 to 3 volts, to be honest with you. Um, if you do get 6, that's great. But most of the time, I find, by the time it goes there, these batteries are very weak. Alright, so let's put this on here. And I'm going to test the power wire and the ground. How can you tell on your bike the difference between a power and a ground wire. Here's the trick. All these wires on the spike have a common ground. In this case, all the lights are plugged into the black and the white wire. So if, if more than one light goes into the ground, it goes into the one connector, it's a ground. If it's individual, then that would be the power. Okay, so this is the power wire. This already has the white and black from the, uh, or black and white from the other side. So I know that's my ground. So there's a quick reference for you. If it's single by itself, it's a positive. If it's got a, a bunch of them plugged into it, it's a ground. All right, so we turn my key on. I'm going to put my test lead into the connector itself, right on there. And then I'm gonna ground it, see if I can find the ground. Oh, all right, look at that, guys. I got four volts, okay? So now I know I have power to the light. Or 
to the pigtail connector, I should say. Now, how do you test the ground? Anybody know how to test the ground? Let me show you. You go back to your diode test right there. Back to the diode. That's conductance. Okay, conductivity. And then should get a reading. If you go zero, more than five, remember isn't open. This is a bad, bad ground. So now what I'm gonna do is I got that like let's see if I can put this where you guys can see. Uh, if you can see that or not. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to the, the multi ground connectors where they all are. I'm gonna stick doesn't matter which way you go. Stick that like that and ground. Here we go. I got a ground reading. I'm just reading all over the place, it doesn't really matter. Okay? See? Zero 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 one. So I got a good I got a good solid ground to that. If it was one zero zero six, that's a bad that's high resistance on that wire. But that's good resistance. Okay. So now we know. Now oh, she shut itself off. So now we know our problem is not in the wiring harness. Just doing that simple test just eliminated the bike's electrical harness. Now I know that the bike legit has power to the plug, to the pigtail, and I have a good ground at the plug. All right. So now all that's left are these two wires and the socket. And of course the bulb. Don't mess around. Replace your bulb. Okay. So now I'm going to show you guys two ways of testing a uh, light fixture that might not be working properly. I'm going to show you guys with a cheap tool and an expensive tool. For this one, I'm going to use the cheap tool first. I'm leaving it still on that diode setting. Oh, be too old with this. All right. You want to set that up so where you can read it and see what I'm doing. So here's your socket. Look at the bottom of the screen there. All right. And then you have your two screws and your outer shell. So that right there is your ground. We're going to test that first. So make sure your key is off just in case. You're going to take your black terminal. Doesn't matter. Stick it on the outer shell of it. And then you're going to go to the common wire. The common wire in this case is the black with the white stripe. So I'm going to plug that onto there. Actually, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, ground for the common wire. And then I'm going to check it here. Okay. I am not reading anything. So now I'm going to check my positive and see if I have positive. I'm going to go to the solid black wire and then I'm going to probe the center. I got a reading. Okay, so this light is not lit, but I've got a good, po uh, good positive terminal. So if I if I probe it again, I go to the center part of the um, the filament. I'm getting a reading zero 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 one. Now I go to the outer shell, the outer part of it, and I touch it to the black with the white wire. I get no reading. So that tells me that my ground wire is bad. So I gotta pull this light fixture off, take the insulation off, and replace the black wire in there. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how I do this with a professional tool, which makes it a little easier for me, okay? So we got positive. I'm gonna put it, I know it's the negative now. So I'm going to disconnect and hook it on my negative. Now, typically, I would test both of these, but since I just did it with that, I know I know which wire it is, so nothing fancy. So I'm going to turn my machine on. Oh, i got to plug it on first. Okay, and then I'm going to turn on my handy-dandy little machine here. I'm going to set my setting. I like it on low, like that. I touch that on there and that tests it. All right, let's get this right out of my way. I'm going to test from the wire back. OK. 
Okay, it's all good there. Oh, I got a short right here. Okay. Right there. See, watch. There it is. There is nothing here. See right here? Nothing. Something. Nothing. Something. Okay, so I have a short right here. Now wait until you guys see this. Do you guys remember what I told you in the last video about inspecting, about checking out things, about being, um, just seeing what's going on with the bike? All right. I'm going to pull this wire down through a little bit. I'm going to have to pull apart. All right, let's see here. I'm going to put you guys on this side over here. Okay. You guys see this? Right there, my friends, is a short. That's what a short looks like right there. It's all... It's chafed. It's cut right through. I'll pull that back a little bit. The wire is split right in two. Right here. So there's a wire right here. That is cut. And it was chafing on the bottom of this. 90% of the time. It's a simple fix. It's a basic fix. It is nothing really over the top complicated. Um, what complicates things is the fact that we don't know what it is. We, uh, we automatically assume a light doesn't come on, it's not getting power. We automatically assume, um, we automatically assume the worst. You know, we automatically assume we've got to replace all the light fixtures. We're going to have to replace all the wiring. Um, if you don't see a fuse blown... Oh, I, I don't know what the I don't know what it could be. I put a new light bulb and it's not working. I put a new fuse, it's not working. Um, what what could it be? It could be something simple as corrosion, white powdery corrosion. Um, that white corrosion that you saw on that light earlier is a very common problem, and that that right there is a very common problem to develop on these bullet style connectors. These are called bullet style connectors. And one thing you can do to clean those up, oh, I'm going to do one real quick and I'll show you. Got my sandpaper here. You just take a sandpaper. Let's pull one apart. Let's pull this, this white one. It's already been greased. I'm going to push that. I got to tighten that one up. Pull one of these apart. Yeah, that's a good connection. Holy cow. I can't even pull one of these apart. I'll just use one of these. Okay, first thing you're going to do is take one of these bolt connectors. Go back and forth. Okay, and that'll clean them up. But then, when you go to plug it back into your connector, use some dielectric grease. This is specifically for electrical connections. This grease keeps water out and keeps the con the connection tight and that's what you need so I use this right here on all my connections and a good tool to use to clean up connections is WD-40 I use that stuff on everything it works great you don't need penetrating oil you don't need a lot of people think you need all this expensive stuff you can get away with using the cheap stuff you can get some WD-40 I use the little can. I keep the little can with me all the time. In fact, I broke the top of it off because I dropped it. But just a can of WD-40. What does WD stand for? Water distribution. That's all it is. This right here is designed to dissipate water. Make it spread out and go away. It is the best stuff for that. And then after it's all nice and clean, 
I then hit it with the, um, what do you call it there? I then hit it with the dielectric grease, and it works out well. So, just a couple of quick tips for you guys, so you guys know what to do in this, ca this case, these scenarios. So, I found the break in the wire. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Um, I use butt connectors on that right there. Um, there's bullet connectors. You can use these butt connectors. Don't use those other red ones. Okay. Now these right here are heat shrink connectors. Typically I would solder them. But these wires have a very hard time soldering. No matter how much flux you put on them. They don't like to solder. And I'm not going to fight with wiring. So I use those right there. And then simply use a little torch. And these right here will heat up nicely and they'll shrink. Watch your heat. Don't get too close. Because you don't want to burn any of the bike. Those are all set. And then what I will do with those later on is I will take unplug the thing and I'll slide a piece of heat shrink tube over that and I'll shrink that up as well. And then that'll be a nice solid connection. It'll be heat shrink here all the way through there. You won't even be able to tell. And then I'm going to reroute the wiring so it's away from the seat and all that type of stuff. So these are just some helpful tips on the wiring we're going to be doing a whole bunch more wiring we've got a lot of stuff to do um on this particular bike i gotta fix that wire that's underneath there um and i have to get the we're going to test brake lights next um tomorrow night we're going to do we're going to work on the brake light circuit so tomorrow night i'm going to wrap up the back here i just got to put the lenses on the new bulbs fix that broken wire the same way i did there so i'm not going to do that on film and then heat shrink the whole thing Put a little bit of slack in that wire and it's all good to go. And then we're going to tackle the brake lights are next. So this is directionals. Then we're going to move into brake lights. And then from brake lights to headlight and so forth. Go right down all the circuits. Just like I wanted to do on that white bike. So hopefully you guys find these videos helpful and informational. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Please share this channel. And uh, thank you guys for watching. You guys are great. I'm out.